Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Rafael Salgado. I'm here on behalf of my PhD advisor, Dr. Sirhan Gunner as well. Uh, we'll present this paper entitled The Out-of-Plane Constitutive Model to Capture the Tsunami Load Response of Course Laminated Timber Buildings. This paper has established a out-of-plane constitutive model that captured the nonlinear and post-peak tsunami-induced response of CLT panel connections. We also developed a simple equation based on 246 calibrated model parameters, which were the results of those 48 uh, high-fidelity numerical models developed. And we also believe that the developed model helped immensely in the performance-based analysis to enable a more accurate determination of the tsunami performance of the CLT building in ways that we would not be able to see and understand if we didn't have those uh, accurate out-of-plane responses. We will be talking about, I will give you a little bit of an introduction and then jump through the objectives of this research. Then I'll talk about the tsunami-induced response of CLT connections and the constitutive model that we've created. And then uh, we'll go through a quick um, kind of a case study of a CLT building performance-based analysis of that and then we'll jump through the conclusions. Uh, due to the time constraints imposed through this presentation of about 12 minutes, I apologize if I go very quickly through some topics, but I encourage you to read the paper further if you're interested in it after this presentation. Let's start going quickly through the performance-based engineering. I'm sure most of you have heard this before and probably know about it. It's a better way, it's a powerful tool that lets us assess the performance of buildings uh, under a given load. It's very commonly used in seismic analysis. It provides us a deeper understanding on the building performance that can help us also understand that building resilience. However, it's just as accurate as our numerical model is that represents our building. So it, we can say that it requires an accurate numerical representation to give us accurate results in the end. Couple that with what motivated us uh, to go into this research, to our resilient cities of the future. We wanted to provide a way to help create those resilient cities. In the scope of this research, those resilient cities are the ones that are located in both seismic and to tsunami active regions of the world. And in our mind, to, for those cities to be resilient, they should have, their buildings should have good seismic and tsunami performance. More specifically, we wanted to look into cross laminated timber, which is a new construction material that has been over the past decades extensively investigated for seismic performance that has been shown to be promising in the seismic context and we wanted to see if this promising performance would also translate into a subsequent tsunami, a tsunami after an earthquake. CLT numerical models due to the extensive seismic research are available for seismic but not for tsunami. So that what motivated us to go into the constitutive model of this uh, tsunami response. Talking about the CLT a little bit, overall structural response of CLT buildings learned from the seismic experience are dictated by its panels, which are then dictated by its connections. And you can see some examples of connections here on the right side. Uh, those are the weak links, let's say, of the CLT buildings. They, they, they concentrate most of the ductility when the, when the load is imposed, and they are mainly comprised of uh, metal connectors, and such as brackets and other type of connectors, steel fasteners such as bolts, screws, sometimes nails, and also the interaction between these fasteners and the panel behind it. So the panel, the, the wood panel, also has some influence on the connection response. And these connections are also dictated by some design configurations such as how many nails are we going to use um, in the in those connections, what's the wood species of the CLT and how that affects the, the interaction with the fasteners. Those are some design considerations that you will you will see that we will use that later on when we did, when we come up with our uh, constitutive model. So the objective of this study was to uh, advance the out of plane um, knowledge of CLT buildings in order that we can in order to provide a means to use that on a performance based engineering analysis to determine the tsunami performance and further tsunami resilience of CLT buildings. To do these two tasks were undertaken. The first one was to create a constitutive model uh, of two connections. In this study, we just analyzed the two connections that we showed in the previous slide. And then we used 48 high fidelity numerical models to create a simple equation in which we would be able to determine all the factors involving that constitutive model uh, from those from that simple equation then then we took that uh, developed constitutive model and just to illustrate how that could be used and what 
type of uh, results that would give us. We used that and performed a performance-based tsunami engineering of a two-story CLT building. So this paper that I'm presenting right now, it's somewhat of a continuation of a paper that was published in the engineering structure that you can see on the screen right now. If you're interested with much more details that I'm talking here and also in the paper of this conference, you can go check this paper out. In the next two slides, I will go very quickly through what we have developed in the journal paper, which uh, will lay the foundation for where this conference paper picks up. So on the top right, you can see the two connections that we have uh, analyzed. One is for wall to foundation applications. Another one is water floor uh, applications. And you can see that water floor connection being used on a real world uh, CLT construction on the left right there. On the bottom right, we can see how we envision the tsunami afflicting a CLT building. On letter C, we have a tsunami coming from the outside, then afflicting an outside wall. Push, that wall pushes those connections towards the inside of the building, creating what we call an OPE condition or out, out of plane exterior load condition. And on letter D, we have the situation that represents a tsunami that has a gone inside the building or maybe the negative pressure that a uh, water flow around the building would create on that wall as well which pushes that wall towards the outside of the building creating a different load condition on those CLT connections and here are the pictures of high fidelity numerical models that we have developed for those two connections under those two uh, load conditions to tsunami load conditions and the graphs on the bottom are the response, the constitutive response of those connections, which were the sole focus of that uh, previous research paper, the journal paper that I've just mentioned. So that's where that journal paper ends, just understanding what the behavior of those connections even look like. So this paper builds up from the, our, our previous paper in which we have the constitutive uh, response that we calculated and observed in the previous paper. And now we want to create a constitutive model out of that. You can see here on the right, on the two right uh, graphs that we have in black, the numerical response I just showed you from the previous paper. And then on top of that, we have overlaid our uh, constitutive model in red. And on the left here, letter A, you can see all the parameters of that constitutive model. There are 10 parameters uh, for the constitutive model. For the water foundation um, model, there's a, an 11th parameter. And they're also divided in four different branches, the elastic, hardening, softening, and the plateau branches. The first thing we did with the developed constitutive models were to go back to the results from that previous paper and try to obtain those 10 parameters that represented the behavior that we calculated and observed on that paper. And that's what this uh, table here on the right represents. Then we wanted to expand the constitution model we just created and uh, go over those important uh, design parameters that I mentioned in the introduction, which were the number of nails on the wall side, the number of nails on the floor side, and also the wood species that uh, our CLT panels are made of. And you can see the different numbers that we consider for each of those parameters. In total, we have analyzed 48 different numerical models. With the results of these 48 models, we have uh, created a simple equation that you can see on the top. And the param uh, part, the left part of this equation, represents any of those 10 or 11 parameters of the constitutive models. And any of those parameters can be dictated by this equation, which is uh, comprised of several different factors. And then these factors were calibrated into the table that I showed here. So based on whatever number of nails that you have and the type of wood species that you have on each part of the connection, you can come to this table, pick it up, plug it in that equation, and you will have one of those uh, 10 uh, parameters required for the constitutive model of the connections. So that's it for the constitutive model. Again, you have much more details on the actual papers I'm mentioning. And then we took that constitutive model and we wanted to implement it in an actual performance-based tsunami analysis of a CLT building. And that's the building that we uh, decided to use it. We stipulated three different performance levels, one for 1%, 2%, and 4% storage drift, which represented low, median, and high Dam extensive damage on the building. These two-story building that we used to do, perform this performance-based analysis were not uh, made by us. We used this uh, literature research conducted by Popovsk et al. 
and we even use it further to validate our results. In this slide, you can see uh, on the right hand side our validation from the response obtained in the laboratory by Popovas et al. and our numerical model. These are the responses of the performance based analysis that we conducted. It's important to note that the load imposed on this building was calculated based on the new ASC7 tsunami load for the location of the building. And you can see here on letter A, for example, that that building could take that load without even reaching the 1% drift level uh, that we classified as the load damage to that building. You can also see from the other three graphs on the left that only one location connections reached a, the maximum capacity of the out-of-plane connections. The other one reached up to 90% but uh, not uh, towards the, the failure part of the connection response. And we also observed that when subjected to OPE load conditions, the connections farther away from interior walls and partitions experience the highest out-of-plane load, but on the other side where the situation is OPI, the connections in, uh, close to those interior partitions were the ones with the highest out-of-plane load because those interior partitions were the ones that actually uh, transferred the load to the walls. So in conclusion, this paper has established a out-of-plane constitutive model that captured the nonlinear impulse peak to tsunami-induced response of CLT panel connections. We also developed a simple equation based on 246 calibrated model parameters, which were the results of those 48 uh, high fidelity numerical models developed. And we also believe that the developed model helped immensely in the performance based analysis to enable a more accurate determination of the tsunami performance of the CLT building in ways that we would not be able to see and understand if we didn't have those uh, accurate out of plane responses. With that, I thank you for going through this presentation with me. Again, if you want to go with more information, I encourage you to look into the conference paper and the journal paper I just mentioned. And then uh, there is another paper we just um, published in between this conference paper that's also based on CLT and a more environmental impact assessment on natural hazard load situations. Thank you very much.